Physical infrastructure plays an important role in fostering development and improvement on the quality of life of people in any society. Apart from enhancing the socio-economic development of nations, infrastructure development is vital in achieving sustainable development goals which the United Nations has identified as one of the global indicator frameworks for the eradication of poverty. With the SDGs, uh, we're talking about leaving no one behind by way of uh, job creation, by way of uh, you know, teaching the youth uh, new skills by way of uh, empowerment in various forms, you know, by way of uh, constructing infrastructure, particularly roads, to link these rural areas, you know, is, are all geared towards uplifting the lives of the rural people. In Nigeria, oil has remained the cash cow accounting for over 80% of the foreign exchange earnings accruing to the nation's coffers on an annual basis. Despite this huge contribution to the annual gross domestic product, standard of living in oil-bearing communities where this all-important resource is harnessed have remained a source of concern and indeed very appalling due to years of neglect. Much more disturbing is the lack of basic amenities and necessary infrastructure in such communities. We have to have governments that are willing to take the bull by the horns and bring development and infrastructure into um, the oil producing areas, the riverine areas. There's no doubt about it that the present administration in Delta State has done a marvelous job as far as that is concerned. Regions, states should be allowed to process their own resources and pay taxes on them, as is done in civilized world. If we do not restructure this country to the point where those who have resources, exploit them and pay taxes to the center, we will be dancing around the question. It can never go away. The oil-rich south-south state of Delta has had its fair share of these infrastructure deficits particularly in oil-bearing communities. The creation of the Delta State Oil Producing Areas Development Commission DESOPADEC in 2007 was one bold step aimed at addressing this infrastructure challenge. The desire to make DESOPADEC more impactful to the needs of host communities led Governor Ifanyo Kowa to seek an amendment to the original law. Today, this wise move by the Okoa-led administration has metamorphosed into tangible infrastructure development that has touched lives, increased transparency in the ways and manners the SOPADEC executes contracts, and improved the capacity of the Commission to implement projects that have direct bearing on the living conditions of the people in the oil-bearing areas. The state, oil producing area, Development Commission Amendment B. It's very key in the sense that it will uh, create a lot of uh, peace and also bring development to the state. I can challenge you to go to any community in Delta State. You will find the presence of the super deck. Either renovating a school, doing a road, sinking a water project, so many. That's why, because the governor is a good manager of resources. The way he has been able to manage the super deck has given more dividends to the beneficiaries of the super deck more than before, because projects are not being done the way it ought to be done. The commission has initiated and executed projects in many sectors, such as healthcare services, building of schools, and provision of learning and teaching equipment, provision of quality housing units, construction of roads in both upland and coastal areas, construction of concrete jetties to ease the burden faced by riverine communities, just to mention a few. The soil product they have tried because they've been able to build health centers, they've been able to start some roads as well. They are trying to bring their effect to the grassroots. Our area is very difficult to develop, but in this short three years, Dr. Ifan Okoa has done marvelously well and some projects that we thought are not deliverable even in my years in NDDC I see the super deck be delivered now at lower than the expected costs and that's the beauty and the magic of it all. 
go through the length and breadth of Delta State, you can see that the governor is working. There are major things that you need to do to give to give to the people for them to survive, for their level of appreciating life to be improved. These are roads, water and electricity. In all these fronts, the governor is doing perfectly well. Take for instance, in the education sector, the commission has constructed quite a number of schools and equipped same to ensure that youths in the region have access to quality education. The Uzere Secondary School in Isoko South Local Government readily comes to mind as the school, which was in deplorable condition, now boasts of several new classroom blocks, teaching and learning aids. I will have the block of GSS-1. I will also have the, the water project that is serving the school. I will have good toilet facilities. All these were done by the super deck, including the fencing of the school with security gates. And so we really want to appreciate the governor. We are indeed very happy for what he has done. Far down into the bowels of the Atlantic Ocean is the Ogola Model School in Burutu local government area. The edifice, which houses boarding blocks, laboratories, administrative blocks for teachers and non-teaching staff, dining halls, and other interesting facilities, is a sight to behold. The Ogola School project adds to many more, which cut across all the local government areas covered under the Commission's mandate. Great Ogula students! I want to urge you to work hard. I know that when you get home, you have things to do. But take your education very seriously. Because with that, you can become persons of note in the future. I came to inspect some projects. One of the projects is a road project, which you just inspected. But more importantly, and that's what is interesting to you, is that there is a modern secondary school being built. And I went to inspect that structure. And I've already directed the MD of the Superdet to make sure that they fast track that project. Because that is actually the school that we expect you to move into as a secondary school. Similarly, the Burutu Grammar School now stands tall as one of the best schools in the state. Equipped with state-of-the-art educational and science facilities, Burutu Grammar School offers interesting subjects which include entrepreneurship, home economics, social sciences and many others, all in a bid to enhance human capital development in oil bearing communities. Formally commission this institution for the learning of all Burutu indigenous and beyond to the glory and praise of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. The beautiful edifice we are speaking today is the legacy of the Google Excellency. In this structure has 24 classrooms, four laboratories, the principal's office and the secretary's office, a seat bay, a library, a reading room, and also a computer room. The rest are rest assured that whatever we are seeing up front there, that we will also see it in the riverine area. Because we want to ensure that our remind brothers and sisters are not left behind. And I thank God that this quality of school we are seeing in the upland, that we also have it in the Reverend area. And we will, as a job, continue to focus on ensuring that there is equity and fairness in all that we do. In Sapale local government area, Desopadek has renovated primary schools and constructed several classroom blocks in many schools in the area. This is in addition to the provision of desks and chairs at Inebo Bene or Lokbak Bene Primary School in Ijasa, Wari Southwest. Family is a group of people who are related by blood. Are you clear? Yes. Formerly, we don't have chairs, we don't have desks, we don't have table. But this year, we are very happy when Governor Kora donated these things to us. So children are very happy when they are sitting down on the desks, writing, doing whatever thing they are doing. Even we teachers, we are very happy. Delta State University, Abraka, has also received attention from Desopadek 
in the area of infrastructure upgrade. The imposing 160 sitting capacity science laboratory and seminar center in Campus 3 has turned things around for this citadel of learning. One physical development that came to the university from the super deck, which is lecture theater. The projects have been completed and is currently in use to increase the carrying capacity of the university to help us to have more spaces for our students to hold their classes. This hall is very spacious, like you can see now, all of us can occupy this hall compared to the rest ones. And there is light right now, the ACs are working, there's fun, we're very comfortable, Lecture is going on fine. Thank you, the governor of the state, Okoa, and in this paddock for the provision of this nine's hall. This hall that was provided to our school by the super deck with the help of the state government is very conducive, it is well ventilated and it is spacious. And in, in terms of comfortability, if you check other halls in our schools, we tend to tighten ourselves to sit down, but this one is making things easy. I will congratulate them, tell them that you have done well. In terms of his uh, position right now, it's one of the classes we consider to be the best in terms of facilities. The College of Education Worry is not left out. Desopadek has commenced work on the abandoned administrative block project in the school. The project, when completed, would provide decent accommodation for lecturers in the college. This is coming on the heels of the completion of the Women Development Center in Ogara, where ICT courses for women are provided. Since this same President Governor took over power, we've been able to wake up our ICT because before now this place was actually a dead zone. But since it came, you can see for yourself our internet, they are working. They have been entitled to one hour free. I want to start by commending the Governor. His interventions have really had an impact on the school. Salaries are paid as a when due. We have never had to go one month without salaries being paid. And because of that, you'll find that staff wranglings have been reduced to the barest minimum. Interestingly, it is not only in the education sector that Desopadek has touched lives in its core mandate areas. It has done well in the area of roads construction. Residents of Stephen Aglenagi Streets in Ogara, Ethiop West, the 11-kilometer Okwefe Ugbenukoko Road, which links Koko in Wari North to Ogara in Ethiopia West local government area, Ebo Road in Ole Isoko South, Okbayo Luchi in Indokwa East, Koko Township Roads in Wari North, Dugbele Street in Indokwa West, can attest to the new lease of life which the roads infrastructure program of Desopadek has brought to these areas. This road was impassable. You know, because the whole place was full of garbage. You know, but since they've constructed this road, the road now is passable. The quality of job they are doing in Ndokwa land. As you can see, this road, you know, look at the thickness. So we are happy with the Stop Adek and we're happy with the government. If you come to this road before, you see vehicles parked. They are stagnant. They cannot come in or go out. People cannot even move along the streets. Now that the road is repaired, it has affected a lot of lives. In this area, we thank Governor Kowa for his effort to make sure that life is easy for people. We love the road and we love the man that uh, in governor today, Dr. Efani Okowa. We love it because all the roads in Indokwa West was renovated well, fine. So we be Okada people and enjoy the roads, fine, fine. Giving the dividend of democracy to the people, as you can see, we came to the smart agenda of the governor because roads helps a lot, linking communities to community, towns to town. And you know, our people are mainly farmers. It will enable them bringing their goods and it will help. The Ugbogo Bodu Road, which has several failed portions, has been rehabilitated for the use of the communities in Ugeli South and North local government councils. This is in addition to the Ekane Road and Onicha Street in Ozoro, Isoko North local government area. The governor have tried a lot. 
with this alone, we, the Itoko North, are much ready to stand for him because he has given us access. Today, in Uzora here, you can see many roads that are leaking from place to place, from place to place, and those are his handwork. So we praise the governor. My words to the governor, I have to say thank you to him because yeah, he really did a lot of things for us. And even the sub I thank them so much for making this road movable for us. The roadmaster has gone across all the local governments, not just major roads, streets of small, small village. In my own village, in my village, government has never done any major road then before. But now we are connecting streets in my local village, which is called Otabuno. This is democracy. We are enjoying it. And we thank him so much on behalf of Ndokwa West, on behalf of Delta, on behalf of everybody that's connected to Delta. Smart Governor, thank you. Still in Ugeli North, the Commission has completed the Umuko Street in Orogu to the delight of the residents. While the hospital road, which is very strategic to the Orogu community, and a health center, which would serve the medical needs of the people, are ongoing. I'm very happy that they do this uh, Umuko road give us rainy season. We don't used to enter this uh, Umuko street before. But with this tie road, many people now are in this road, they used to straight to Abe. Our government is good. The road they very bad, water they gather around before. So God may call take and say, pay, say these people when they the street that they, they suffer. They call call do and for us. So they enjoy the road now. But it they sweet us for what the governor Okowa do for us. May God bless her. When we came about and the Sovereign members, the governor draw our attention that a project should be driven from the mandate area, not you as a board member, to initiate project that may not be important to the people. And as you can see, every project you see in my mandate area is being driven by the community. You can see that uh, the community are very happy with the government of uh, Delta State. Smart Delta. Welcome to Delta. My Delta, my Delta. Uh, welcome to Delta. My Delta, my Delta. Come live in Delta. Come invest in Delta. Come explore the potentials of our state. It better run, run, come, come to Delta State. Come and see the good things where Okowa is. They do it better. Run, come, come to Delta State. Come and see the good things where Okowa is. They do I see your job and wealth creation in Delta. Make the youth say them higher. Okowa. For the coastal communities whose major means of transportation is through the waterways, the construction of landing jetties and donation of boats has played very important role as it helps the people to access neighboring settlements through water transportation. The newly constructed jetties at Naifo Island, Ajuju and Inebogbene communities have eased the burden of the inhabitants of these communities. Before. When the jetty have not been done, uh, we are passing through plank jetty. It won't take months before two months time, we get rotting. So now that uh, this uh, work that uh, the super deck have done uh, is very good. Even midnight, even when the water dried, we can still have access to enter here through the jetty. Well, it was bad, but we are managing it for a bit. Now the government has provided this one for us and it was okay. We appreciate the jetty and we are thankful to Governor Kowa. Their desire to see and feel the new lease of life in oil-bearing communities led our Smart Delta crew to take a boat trip through the creeks. After several hours of boat ride and meandering through several water channels and estuaries that empty into the Atlantic Ocean, our Smart Delta crew arrived at Polobubo Shekelewu in Wari North, where Desopadek has constructed a steel bridge for the community. The construction of the steel flyover bridge has solved an age-long problem of connectivity among communities. The executive director of Project Desopadek, Philip Bassing, speaks on the project. There are quite many. One of them is this Gula project we just inspected now. We have the Shekelewu footbridge linking the community on two sides of a river. 
That one is really a star project, which the governor, in fact, was delighted to come and commission is any time from now, because that is the first of its kind. We have several landing jetties. Before now, without boat, you cannot cross to the other side. But now, you don't need to get a boat. It's very easy for you to go to the other side and people from the other way. Very easy for them to get here. It's a very beautiful place at night when you see the street lights on. It has been of a great help to us. Coastal communities can now enjoy decent accommodation. Thanks to Desopadek, which has constructed several blocks of buildings at Okrenkoko, Wari Southwest local government area. The housing projects, in addition to other projects, have changed the narrative about the efforts of Desopadek to impact positively on oil producing areas. The government is trying. We really appreciate what the government is doing in this our community. With this housing unit, accommodation is well okay for people. This community will stand and support the Okoa administration. We appreciate them for them to accept this something to bring them to our community and it make our community to look nice because many communities they don't get this one. Apart from this, the Delta State Oil Producing Areas Development Commission, Desopadek, has also impacted positively on security and peace building. The recently commissioned police station at Mosoga, Ethiop West local government area, is one major step towards enhancing security in oil producing areas. I can never thank you enough, the social deck, for being a strong pillar to the command. This building, like so many other projects undertaken by you across the state, is also a testament to your understanding, care, and support to the command. We are in partnership with Nigeria Police and other security agencies to sustain the city and security being enjoyed in the We are happy that the project is well executed and we to thank His Excellency, the Governor, for his cooperation, for his support, and for his assistance for directing the Desert to emphasize more on campus. We are glad that we have such a physical place. The Desert has started. And just as the river was started and the river was finished, the Superdeck will have to find a way to complete the assignment that they have started. <laughs> so, MD, before you get worried out, please listen to Amori, at least concerning the provision of the vehicle for this police station. Through the execution of many life touching projects, the Superdeck has enhanced peace building in oil bearing communities. Smart Delta. The swearing in of three new commissioners into the board of the Sopadek by Governor Ifanyo Koa to fill the vacant positions for the Urobo and Ijo ethnic nationalities have boosted the existing peace building platform in the oil bearing areas. Go to the Luga Kranin, everywhere around the state, you will see the governor's impact. He'll be able to build roads, there is water. I want to do the poor man at their need to live a very good life, portable water, electricity, good schools for their children. That gives them happiness. And the governor has been able to bring food on the table. I appreciate him. He has restructured the super deck to the extent that what used to be no longer is. Formerly, the commissioner representing each ethnic nationalities were full-time members. But now they are part-time members, whereas we have executive directors in various part of it. That has strengthened the performance of the Sepadek. By dint of hard work and due diligence, the Delta State Oil Producing Areas Development Commission, the Sepadek, has, in addition to the untiring efforts of the state government, brought even development to oil-bearing areas in the state. The commission holds its success to the vision of the okoa led administration in amending the enabling law, which has made it more responsive to the yearnings of the people. We have faced one year, what the state was receiving was less than what the supporter was receiving prior to when this governor came up on board, because there was a crisis. Now that revenue has improved, we have also faced in part of that. We pay contractors on a monthly basis now. So my appeal is that now that we have somebody who is development focused, let us create a peace that will create, a, will make the revenue available 
to fly back into the community. The soap paddock, they've done some good jobs in the various areas, in the River Rhine area, and even in the urban centre. So I think uh, government should continue to encourage them with more funding so that their jobs will be carried out effectively. Evidently, the Okoa-led administration has, through the activities of the Sopadic, demonstrated its commitments to develop the oil-producing communities, and that commitment has rekindled renewed hope of brighter days ahead. This is only the tip of the iceberg. More to come in 2019. Okoa the work with the sea. Explore the potentials of our state. 